Hi, welcome to a vlog that I, I just felt like vlogging. I haven't vlogged since October or something like that. I think October, maybe the love and the night readathon. thought. <laughs> and um, I decided just to do a bonus video vlog because I feel like vlogging. <laughs> I don't have a vlog on my schedule until like the end of February. So it's raining outside, windows are open. It's like 60 degrees in Western Pennsylvania in January. So that's wild. We're usually in like the 30s, 20s, 30s. That's the norm. Yeah, I'm, I'm vlogging. I <laughs> I need to reset my life basically. Spoiler alert, my life did not get reset. One week did not make life altering difference, but some of the house got cleaned. So a win is a win. So October, October, <laughs> right. Um, December was rough. <laughs> January has been rough, so things are not going well. It's not like anything horrible and it's nothing inside of my family or inside of my marriage or anything like that, but it's stuff that's outside of our control that affects us and can affect multiple things based on the dominoes, right? And like our children, especially our boys, are not doing well. They're really affected by it and they're not having a good time and we as their parents can't do anything to make it better and it really sucks to be in that position obviously it's a part of parenting no child is going to go through all of adolescence without having problems and problems that their parents can't fix but it just sucks <laughs> Okay, it just sucks a lot right now and there's nothing we can do about it. So I'm just kind of waiting for the season of life to be over and I don't know what it will bring. I know it's not going to last forever. I don't know what things will stay the same and what will change, but we're just kind of going through it right now. We're kind of stressed and depressed and not having the best time. And then we were sick so much of December. Then we had Christmas, we had New Year's, we had Christmas with my in-laws, we had a birthday, just so much business, so much work for me, you know, and just a lot. So at that point where some things have been sitting, needing to be done for four days, some for a week or two weeks or a month, and it's just like everything needs done and everything is overwhelming and whatever I do get done, there's so much more left. So <laughs> well, come along with me while I um, go through it, I guess. I don't know. So I finished my first book of the year and I have a book from the library and a book on Kindle Unlimited that I really want to read. And then I want to try and start the read what you own challenge at least some of it but I don't know how much I'm gonna do I also don't know how many days I'm going to vlog so we'll see but that's where we're at welcome to the vlog um it's probably not gonna be great <laughs> okay bye you can see the state of my desk right now why so after taking care of a lot of the chaos of Christmas in my room, I filmed my December wrap up. Then I decided to show you my Christmas clearance haul from TJ Maxx. Years and years ago, I used to read the Cupcakes and Cashmere blog like all the time. And so it was fun to see her stuff in TJ Maxx. Like I liked that. So I didn't get a ton, but I liked what I got. And then I tackled my desk. It was the last thing to do in my room to have peace, I guess. And then while I work at my desk, I thought I'd talk to you about some of my reading priorities. So these uh, templates are by Robin at Paperbacks and Planners, who I talk about pretty frequently. But um, I've been using them. So obviously I tend to read books I really enjoy. So I could have made like five more lists of five star productions, but I didn't. And you'll see a lot of overlap here because there are specific books I really do want to prioritize for the year. And in this one I have 
the Innkeepers Read Along, nonfiction, fantasy, and new releases, like anticipated releases that I know for a fact I will be reading as soon as they come out. These are probably my top five anticipated releases of the year right now, that bottom row. So there you go. Then I put on a reading journal video. I really do like to watch these videos while I'm working on my journal. What do you like to watch while you're doing desk work? I either do ones that are talking about books where all I have to do is listen or because I, I'm like never just watching the screen while I'm watching a video, I sometimes put on ones where I can glance at it easily if I want to see something. So this is my January planner, all the videos I'm planning on doing, and kind of my method for as soon as I post a video. That's when I get to reward myself with the stickers <laughs> and not just the post-it notes. I love this system. I've been using it since the very beginning of my channel, and I cannot tell you how much I love it. It makes switching videos around so easy. You're never ruining your planner because all of your plans were on post-it notes. And then when that video is up, you do kind of get the serotonin boost of the reward of having it pretty and actually in your planner. So I'm just a huge fan of this. Have been from the beginning. I think everyone should use it if they have a paper planner for their videos. And, you know, that that's my pitch, I guess. So I do like to get a plain planner. I like to get one that's almost just the calendar pages because that's all I use is that monthly calendar page. And then I like to add in things. So I uh, tend to do ones that are from shows or things that I like that don't quite fit my vibe in my reading journal. I'll use those for my monthly planner. And, you know, it works for me. I'm really happy <laughs> with my system. So this is actually the first time that I filled anything out in my 2023 reading journal, which means there's going to be a lot of struggling to find the right shade of marker that I was trying to assign to specific things. At the beginning, you know, it's a little bit of a learning curve where you are constantly checking what does this shade mean or not, but... The new markers that I got, I feel like, are even harder because there's several that are basically interchangeable. <laughs> I'm having a really hard time telling which shade they actually are. Like, I have a picture of them all lined up against their swatches on the page, and for some reason, it's still just a struggle bus. And then while I was in the middle of doing this journal, I realized I was missing like two or three markers and that's why I was picking the wrong ones partially. So then I had to like hunt and try and figure out what happened to my markers. They just fallen into like stacks of paper on the floor, but uh, <laughs> there's definitely a couple mistakes where I'm just like, what the frick? That's not what that color means. Why could I not find what I wanted? So... And on this page, you can see I already have like a color code system. So I already have what color I'm using to mean each thing picked. So I just had to line it up. But then some of these other pages, I wasn't 100% sure what color I wanted to use for it. I basically ended up going with the system that if I already had a marker in the spread, I used that same shade to do the tracking on it. And also, I didn't want to have a different colored marker for like every single page because that makes filling out the trackers a little bit harder because a lot of times, you know, you read one book. Now you need to fill out all the trackers that apply to that book. And it's easier if you don't have to use 12 different markers, if you only have to use like two or four markers. I found that that was really helpful in the first reading journal, last year's reading journal, you know, every trope, it didn't matter which trope it was, it was still using the same color, so I just had to go through. This spread, it's based on the rating, and then this spread, it's based on the length of the page, since obviously that is what that tracker is, and then like this one, it would be, it doesn't matter which square it goes in, the color matches the page, so I, you know, have it in my head. I know which it is, but for you watching, 
it might be <laughs> a little bit confusing if I'm not explaining it, but um, it's definitely a system that works for me, especially because, you know, the five star color is always the same. It doesn't matter which page it is and the same for the other ratings. So, you know, whatever I rated it, it's getting that same one on a lot of different places. So that makes it easier too, I guess. And this is one of those where I'm pretty sure it's the right shade, but I don't, I don't know for sure. So all of this was for Clean Sweep. It was the only book I'd read so far in the year. So there was no steam in it. So there were no kinks to track or any of those things. So for some books, they'll go in all the spreads and some won't. And, you know, it's it's fun to fill out, especially because sometimes I'm like, oh, am I done? Have I done all of the trackers that apply to this book? And then I'm flipping through and I'm like, oh no, I have like a few more pages to do. But as long as you keep on track, like keep on top of it and do it at least every couple books that you read, it's really, you know, not that hard. I feel like if you wait forever, then it would become an impossible, insurmountable task. So like this series progress tracker, I had not yet picked which markers I was going to use for each designation. So that's what I'm doing here. And then last year, I kind of had different colors for rereads, but this year I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. So now I'm just flipping through a couple spreads that don't apply and then getting back to more trackers. So this is the... Uh, subgenres and tropes and things like that and you can see I decided to use the same marker for all of that so the uh, labels and the boxes are what are making a difference between one or the other and then the color will be the same so you'll just see like if the whole box is filled up or if two are in there you can see the frequency that the trope was used which is the whole reason why I'm using it so you know I'm spending a little bit more time on these pages, reading the tropes, trying to see what fits or doesn't fit, trying not to miss any. Because Clean Sweep is urban fantasy, there are a lot of contemporary tropes that apply as well as paranormal or sci-fi or fantasy. So it's an interesting mesh of the tropes and things that fit. But I had a lot of fun finally getting to use this. I've been working on you know, setting this journal up for a couple of months already. Like, I think I started early November. So to finally start filling it out was honestly really fun, even if the marker <laughs> struggle continued because the first couple of days of the year were terrible. And then I tried to put bad. And then it, I think the shade is like good. And I'm like, no, they weren't. They weren't good. <laughs> where's the marker that I need? And this is, I think, where I really discovered that I was definitely missing some markers here. But then I use a lot of Breeze tracker stickers in my monthly spreads. So when I do read a book, I'll put stuff on. So for this journal, I think right now I'm wanting to use the page number stickers because I think it's interesting to see how many short or long books I am reading off one single TBR in a month. And then I did do sci-fi there, but I ended up switching it to my rating sticker because that's what I always use in the monthly spread. And I kind of forgot about that while I was, you know, filling out that first time. But then when I did my next book, I <laughs> did switch it. So um, yes, I used the wrong hand to snap. Yes, it's a whole different day, a whole different outfit. Pretend like you don't see. <laughs> and then I did the next day as kind of a, you know, day in the life come along with me. So I had to go to the dentist and the store and all of that. So I put a pork loin in the crock pot before I headed out. This one's already marinated. So easy. It's also gluten free. If you can eat pork but can't have gluten, it might be a good option for you. So then I went to my favorite local Mexican restaurant. I had a gift card. My husband still doesn't know that I went to this. Not that like it would matter even the slightest bit, but I haven't told him. And, <laughs> and I don't think he knows, even though I ate my leftovers, you know, by him. I don't think he realized. So 
Then the TJ Maxx is my favorite store. So I spent a little bit too much time doing my absolute best to spend money in here and failing. All I got was slippers for my daughter and some Valentine's Day towels, which she really likes. So I guess it was a hit. Then I rushed through Walmart trying to get just the most basic things that we were completely out of and absolutely needed. Because we are a family of five with two dogs and two cats, <laughs> my cart is always overflowing but I just did not have time to get all the things this time because I was late for the dentist, which this is me rushing in. I was late because I took a wrong turn. So even if I had been on time, I wasn't going to be. Have I been to the dentist a million times? Yes, I have. Um, am I directionally challenged and can get lost literally anywhere? Yeah, it's a true story. Hello guys, my name's Ella. I do the bed. One, two, and I get a mat for you. And I get an ad for you. Okay. What was that? What was that? Why are we being so loud? Right, Neil. Um. One. I got one. Oh, I got the pig spiders. This is hot, so watch out for that. But put that one in. Put this one in. So every winter slash spring, as soon as there are tulips in the store as bouquets, that's when I'm buying. I think it really helps me to not feel like the winter blues and be so sad that it's going to be cold for freaking ever because it's like no it's almost spring look it's tulips <laughs> it doesn't matter that we can literally have snow for the next four months still because the tulips are out and that's a sign of <laughs> spring coming so I always do this I uh, for most flowers I use a knife but tulips I find you can use scissors pretty pretty effectively so there you go a little bit of cheer in this winter <laughs> desolation. <laughs> then I made coffee, changed into leggings as one does, uh, took my bun out, which my hair was still wet four and a half hours later because my hair's thick. <laughs> and then I organized the stickers, got my desk ready to do the live show with Brie, which is her interviews where she does get to know the romance reader. I've watched a few and really enjoyed all the ones that I've been able to catch. And it's just a really fun series that she has. I was very happy that she wanted to do it with me. Then I loaded the dishwasher and did pulled pork, smothered wedges, steak fries, queso. It was it was freaking delicious. Then we watched the readathon episode of Abbott, which was fantastic. While we did that, I helped my son put Minecraft Legos together, and then at the very last possible minute, I rushed around trying to slap some makeup on my face for the interview with Bree, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is my uh, mascara face, you know, the way that you hold your mouth is important to the application, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was in a hurry, but... I got it done. I, I was on there before she was. So, you know, it was a win. And this conversation was honestly so much fun. I had such a great time. I love hanging out with Brie. Like, I adore her. I just do. So I had a great time. So if you haven't watched it, you know, maybe do that. Maybe not. I don't know. Bodily fluids or religious trauma. We just kind of stared at each other and he's like, Have a good day. I swear to God, every time. I'm just like doing it. I'm like, Ah! <laughs> I could have thrown that away in the trash. Instead, you threw it away in your body and now your body has to process it for no reason because you didn't want it. And they're all like, A whole child's outfit in here is necessary. You know? and then, like one of our friends dared us to kiss and I was like, Okay. But, you know, we're going to have to go like this over our lips for plausible deniability. If anyone but you just DNF that. things with no care in the world. It's my favorite oh, thing. Yeah, no. So then after the interview, I went into wind down mode and tried to chillax and fall asleep. And that was my day. Hey, 
It's a couple of days later. I just got back from a children's birthday party, uh, which are the bane of my existence. <laughs> but yesterday, I laid around all day and read. I read The Lone Wolf's Rejected Date by Casey Wells, and I read all of it yesterday. It was great. It was amazing. They killed me. The angst, the pining, the <laughs> all the things. So it's an age gap fan mate. He's like uh, over 20 years older than she is and part of his not wanting to be with her is because she is so young but mainly his wolf through trauma is feral and just unstable and not sane and could murder her and obviously he uh wouldn't be able to live with that so and then there's like an enemy and they get abducted together and there's just all the things so it was really really good five stars <laughs> so angsty <laughs> Then I'm like 35% into Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This is the book I have from the library. It's due um, in five days or so. So I should be able to get through it, even though I don't plan on just reading it straight through. So I have some reading plans that I've got going. So I am trying to do the Read What You Own Challenge, which there's one being hosted by Izzy at Happy For Now and Shay at Shay Geeks Out. And then there's another one being hosted by Tamira at Shades and Pages and Sharonda at Sharonda Reads or something maybe. I'm not exactly sure what her channel name is. She has a channel. Shades and Pages has just Instagram. But they both are pretty uh, involved on TikTok. So that's main And they have a podcast and stuff. But so uh, Tamira and Sharonda's is... So I literally filmed this one minute ago. And I'm editing it. And I'm like, who... <laughs> The actual heck is Tamira. Her name is Tama. <laughs> Why? 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 And Sharonda's is January and February. And then Izzy and Shay's is January, February, March. So I'm trying to get through some of the things that I have bought and haven't read. I think I do a pretty decent job of this and I definitely don't have an excessive TBR but I'd like to knock some out. My goal is really 10 in the next couple months of the books that I own. So I think I'm going to pick one of those up tonight. So I'm thinking about something short. <laughs> so either The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert because I still haven't read it. Even though I pre-ordered it like a year ago. Or I might read Ensnared by the Werewolves by Lillian Lark, which I know has primal play in it, I think. Or I might read The Merman's Kiss, which I have in an anthology from Elsie Winters. So that's the only Elsie Winters I haven't read yet. It's a novella that I want to get to. So I think I might pick one of those up. They're all like monster romances basically and they're all novellas. So, or novella-ish. None of them are super long, I know. So I think I think that's gonna be one of those. I have already deleted like three or four anthologies that I bought years ago, like a couple years ago that I'm never gonna read. So I'm already technically eliminated some of my own TBR. But I think I'd like to knock one or two out, but also like those aren't calling to me. <laughs> So, I guess we'll see, but tomorrow is the Bengals game, so I'm going to be going to my sister's for that, so I will probably check in with you tomorrow night, maybe. <laughs> hey, so I did not read anything last night. We watched the rest of the current episodes of The Circle, which I'm really loving this season. I think it's season five. Uh, really loving it. I love Raven and Chaz. Those two are my absolute favorites. But I also really like Tom and Sam. Um, so yes, that's who I'm loving right now. If you watch The Circle, I, I'm obsessed. It's like my favorite reality show. I really liked The Mole on Netflix as well. So those two are like the only reality shows I've really enjoyed in the last year or so. But um, loved it. Also, like a week ago, watched Witcher Blood Origin. Loved that. It's really fast paced, so you're not getting as much detail. But 
I personally really enjoyed it, especially if you want the fantasy vibes without quite as much deepness to it, I guess. Yeah, we watched The Circle. I stayed up till one o'clock in the morning doing TikTok. And today, Bengals played. They're the division champions. So my husband's super happy. They're going to the playoffs, all of the things. So he's happy about that. But um, go Bengals, you know. <laughs> um, so that's it. I didn't read anything. The vlog is long. We're done here. It's Sunday, which means tonight is America's Funniest Home Videos for my family. I've got chicken, carrots, and potatoes in the crock pot. I'm ready to chill for the rest of the day. Even though I want to read, I don't feel like reading any of the things, but I want to read some mysterious other thing <laughs> that I don't know about yet. So go me. So it's the eighth day of the year and I've read two books. <laughs> that's good. No, Bob, that's bad. If you get that reference. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. I feel like this was a very weird vlog. If you want me to vlog more, let me know. They don't do that great and I tend to think that they're terrible. Like my vlogs I think are terrible. So I don't do them as often but if you want to see them more often go ahead and tell me that and I will try to put some out for you. But generally speaking I don't do a lot, a lot of vlogs because of those reasons. So let me know if you want more. But yeah I thought the format was weird. I thought everything about was weird. <laughs> But I always think that and then I post it anyways. So go me. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.